Hello everyone, today we are going to discover everything about Docosaurus. We are going to go from zero to hero. So let's get started. First of all, we are going to start our uh, tutorial with the installation of Docosaurus it itself. It is an npx command in which is Docosaurus in it latest, and then Docosaurus, uh, whatever name you want to give, and then we specify the team that we want to use. In this case, is classic. For co your convenience, I'm going to skip over all of this installation process. It's going to take uh, a little bit of time, depending on the speed of your internet connection and your computer. There we are. We opened the um, uh, Docosaurus project we just created. In my case, it's called uh, Docosaurus YT example. Let's explore a little bit the structure of those, of those folders inside the project. So each folder, such as blog, docs, has inside markdown files, which is what we actually use for, our, for writing our uh, documentation material. We can use a special markdown format, which is also called MDX, which is a special kind of markdown built by Facebook and it's similar to JSX and has some uh, nice features that we can explore later. Each one of those uh, uh, folders has a different purpose. For example, inside the source folder, we can see how we can actually make some special pages with a special component. This is the example homepage that we're going to see in a minute what it looks like in the browser. There, are, there is a feature list and it's going to be rendered uh, exactly how you would in a normal uh, React uh, style. So each time you have a feature, you exploit this feature. This is our index page, which is uh, what contains this on page feature that we just saw. And it's going to be seen by um, Docosaurus for us. The static folder, of course, contains all of our icons, images, etc. that we might need in our uh, documentation material. It's going to be referred to uh, build time. Then we have a build folder. The build folder contains all of the um, uh, build uh, material. So it's essentially HTML files that can be directly downloaded into the browser of the user, and you can actually see the contents straight after. OK, then let's have a look at some other files, a little bit more technical. We have a Docosaurus config file, which I'm going to explore a little bit later, um, and contains many items, including uh, uh, team settings, presets, uh, if you want to add plugins, etc. The name of the website that you are building. Then there is a sidebar.js file that essentially is going to configure uh, uh, your sidebars. There is a tutorial sidebar in there, which is um, going to take the name of the of the sidebar, and in this case it's auto-generated, which means it's going to take everything inside the docs folder and generate the sidebar for us. Let's have a look by running npm start what our website looks like right now. We need to wait a little bit of time to allow our system to boot up, and uh, then we're going to see the result in the browser. Here we are, we open the browser and uh, localhost 3000, and this is what the default uh, uh, Docosaurus website looks like. This is no configuration, no changes, nothing. We simply defined our Docosaurus out of the box, and in here, let's have a look what happens if we change uh, some of the styles in the home page. Uh, as an example, that to demonstrate this is actually just a React component. So you can add a, a CSS file. Actually, if you can see, there is a CSS folder that you can actually modify to edit some of the styles and to edit the colors with the release to have a dark, for example, uh, version of the website. This is our sidebar, as you can see, which is going to list all of our, uh, all of the default documents that have been created for us at the installation time. We are going to see later how to create also a live coding block example during this tutorial. So let's keep looking uh, 
and exploring those folders. Uh, let's add, for example, uh, a new file inside our docs folder. That is our uh, example uh, document.markdown. What is going to happen in this empty file? We can have different features in uh, our document in our document, which is how it's highlighted uh, in the in the documentation itself. However, if you're creating a blog post, uh, it's a little bit different than creating a general document file. In a blog, you can see there are these many different items. While um, if you want to have uh, a document, instead, uh, it's much more simple. You just put an H1 tag, and this is going to be the title uh, in the sidebar, for example. If we take this example, this hello example, and we paste it, uh, and then we go and have a look back to our uh, sidebar, you can see that the hello page has shown up. Okay, not nowhere else, but just in the sidebar, hello. And you can see, hello, this is my first document. Now, if I change the hello with another word, you're gonna see that the, that the sidebar is going to change. Example doc, and now example doc on the sidebar because that's what it's going to take. And if you actually put two H1s, you're going to see that docker is actually going to complain because you cannot have two H1s in the same page. And if you remove the title, what's going to happen is that Docosaurus takes the name of the file to display. So that's about the documentation section. Now let's have a look at the sidebar.js file, which can actually be customized as it done in here, so that we can have items that we actually just want. So what is going to happen here, we give uh, a type, which is category, or for example, auto-generated, a label, and then the items that we want. The items are the actual files that we want to have inside. So in this case, I'm adding two sections, tutorial, which is contained the example that we had before, and then uh, the intro file. Now, what is going to happen? That we're gonna have a sidebar with the two items, tutorial um, basic, and then we specify the file, congratulations in this case. And we're going to see that we can add uh, the different items, congratulations. So we can actually fully customize our sidebar with release through the sidebars.js. We can add more items, we can mix and match, uh, we can put our own um, uh, direction. Uh, however, there is also a tag that you can specify the order inside the markdown file itself. Um, so you can uh, modify and as you can see, it's quite easy to do. I would suggest you to leave the auto-generated for now until you're actually familiar or maybe use just the um, sidebar order in the markdown file itself because it's the easiest way to do. The next bit we're gonna show it's how to install uh, TypeScript in this DocuSaurus um, document. So we need uh, some modules. I'm gonna put them in the description below for you. Let's proceed with the installation. It's gonna take just a few seconds. And now in the root folder of the project, we add a uh, tsconfig.json with the following content. Uh, which comes straight from the Docosaurus documentation. The config file comes from uh, the one of the packages we just installed and the source is essentially the source folder that we are using uh, in the project, the source where we're gonna put the files. So let's have a look at how we can do our first footer using uh, the um, special command. This uh, switzel command, what it's going to do, is going to copy the footer uh, element from the team that we are using uh, inside our source folder. So after running the, pro the command, if we open the source directory, we're gonna see a new folder, team, and th this includes an index and a star.modules.css. And in here we're gonna see the different items. It's essentially a basic React page and you can actually use this to overwrite whatever default uh, uh, item uh, that was in there. Um, <clears throat> as you can see, it uses a modular CSS, so you can actually import the CSS as a module, and then use the class names uh, 
uh, coming from this import uh, without the risk of a conflict uh, as it accustomed uh, today. If you wonder where all of these items come from, you just have to look uh, no more than the docosaurusconfig.js uh, where we have a link section and we can do an example. We can, for example, change some labels. Um, let's change, let's see. I change the community section. We're going to call it our community. Just to demonstrate that this file is what actually controls the footer. Uh, it should have changed. Of course, we need to start it. And here you can see our community. You can make other changes. It's on my project ink. Mostly code. Go back to the browser. And now let's have a look at the last bit I would like to show you, which is the live code block. We need to install a package which is called the team live code block. And let's see how we can use it. After the installation, let's open the docuseros config file and let's add a new section in here. A new section or maybe pre-existing one. Now what I like to do in here is to collapse all of these sections because they can be quite big. As you can see, more than 100 files of configuration. So we add a team array and in here we're going to call the just installed docosaurus live team team live code block. Okay, so now we can uh, use it inside our markdown files with a special uh, triple backtick JSX for example or JavaScript etc. So let's open our docs folder and we can add a new file. An example for this live coding. Let's call it live coding.markdown. And in here, since it's a document page, we can actually add some items. So a title, a description. And now let's add uh, some items. Live coding with React in Docosaurus. Some example. Okay, triple backtick, JSX Live. And in here we're gonna put our code. So we just need to put a function function example uh, example live this function is going to receive some props and in here we're just going to use it uh, as we would uh, in a react application so we can use uh, a set state so we're going to define two variables counter and set counter use state uh, and we give that state initial state of zero and now we just make a simple return with an element and two buttons to set this counter. So I'm gonna return a div, which is gonna be our main block. Inside it, we're gonna put a, an element which contains the counting. So the counter. I don't like this variable name, you know what, I'm gonna change it to count. And now we're gonna put two buttons, one to increment and one to decrement. So on click, we just set the count to count plus one. Uh, let's call this button add. Now let's do another button which is exactly the, the same but count minus one. 
and we we'll call it subtract. Now npm store start. Go back. Click on the tutorial. And there you go. Ah, wait a minute, something is wrong. Maybe the sidebar from before from the examples. Let's remove this example code and let's restore the tutorial sidebar. And now there you go, live coding. And let's have a look if we actually change the example. Let's start from 10. There you go. We can have a dynamic and uh, live editor actually working uh, in our documentation. So this is everything for today. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please leave a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you very much and see you next time. Bye.